Okay, dear students, let us see what is there in this question. A rectangular flat coil moves at a constant speed through a uniform magnetic field. The direction of the field is into the plane of paper. Which graph shows the variation with time t of the induced EMF <coughs> in the coil as it moves from P to Q? Okay, so there is this coil and this coil is trying to move uh, through an area where there is a magnetic field which is existing into the page and it is going like this. So we have to comment on the EMF that is produced. Okay, let's see. So first of all, when something is like entering here, so this length will be taken like this length. And you might have done the questions for the motional EMF. So we know that in the topic of motional EMF, the EMF produced was given by the formula BLV. It means you can clearly see that the magnetic field is a constant value. The length is also having a constant value here. And the velocity with which it is moving is also constant. So overall, I can see that a constant EMF will be produced without any doubt. So once it starts entering into it, it is, it is now cutting the flux. And so E is equal to BLV will be produced. Now you can take it as a positive value. You can take it as a negative value that depends upon the direction. So we can just assume it to be positive, let us say. Now let us move next. Now, once the complete loop has entered into the magnetic field, now what is the total EMF that is produced inside the loop? Let us see. You see on this edge, on the first edge of this loop, the EMF is produced and okay, I'm just going to name, name this. A, B, C, D to be more clear. Let us say that I'm talking about C, D segment now. So when the C, D segment is moving through the magnetic field, EMF will be induced there. And what will be the EMF induced? And how are you going to find the direction of the induced EMF or the induced current? We are now going to use another rule, which is right hand palm rule type three. Ladies and gentlemen, and my dear students, listen to this thing because I do not use the Fleming's right hand rule or left hand rule. They're very confusing, but I have created my own rules like right hand palm rule. This is a quite popular rule, but it is of three types. So this is the terminology that I have added by myself, like type three. So what I do is my fingers are pointing towards the magnetic field. My thumb is pointing towards the velocity of the rod and the palm will give you the direction of the positive charge or the direction of the induced current. I'm writing it here. So fingers is about the magnetic field. Thumb is giving you the velocity of the conductor and the palm will be giving you the direction of the induced current or you can say induced EMF. It means like here, so the magnetic field is into the page and it is moving towards right hand side. So the EMF will be in the upward direction. So D is going to become the positive end and C is going to become the negative end. So overall, I can just say that there is a battery now. So this battery is now induced. There is no battery in the circuit, but I can just assume that there is a battery there. Similarly, in the case of AB also, I'm going to assume another battery because AB is also a rod moving through the magnetic field. So again, the magnetic field is into the page and even this is moving towards right hand side. So there is again another EMF which is produced. Now the length is the same, magnetic field is the same, velocity is the same. So the EMF induced will also be same in the magnitude. Clearly, there are two batteries which are equal in magnitude and they're acting opposite to each other. It means that yes, EMF is induced, but no EMF is induced, isn't it? Like EMFs, they are basically acting opposite to each other. So the current through the loop will be zero. EMF will also be zero. So this total EMF is now going to be zero in the middle part. There is no doubt about that. So D is definitely wrong. Now, when it goes towards Q and it gets out at that time, this is already out. And so no EMF is being generated by this part, but the other part is generating an EMF. This is positive, this is negative. But now definitely the current is in the opposite direction. Here the current was in the opposite direction. Like this was anti-clockwise and this is clockwise. So current has changed its direction. Okay, so earlier we were taking this direction as positive. So this will be taken as negative. So it means that the direction has to be opposite. Now, first of all, C is wrong. Why? Because EMF is constant. There is no variation in EMF. 
D is wrong because in the middle part, the EMF should be equal to zero. So our answer should be either A or B. Now, another thing that we have found is that the EMF produced will be of the opposite nature from both of the cases. So one will be positive, another will be negative. Definitely A will be the answer. B is also going to be wrong. Here, I we just assumed EMF to be positive in initial case, but it is taken to be negative here and it is taken positive later. Now that depends just on our sign conventions, whether you want to take it as positive or won't you want to take it as negative. So I just remove this thing now. So let us say this is the negative. So earlier the EMF produced is taken negative and now the EMF produced when it is getting out of the magnetic field that is taken positive. And meanwhile, it is zero. So this is how the EMF is produced in this question. So my dear students, this is Professor Varun. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel and join the YouTube channel if you want to access the paper two questions. Okay, so the answer for this is clearly A. All the best. Bye.